Atheist Nomads, episode 102. News for July 9, 2015. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A R C H W A Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash atheist nomads. As a concerned parent of the uh, free thought community, I want to advise uh, atheist nomad listeners that this is an adult show. There will be things discussed, talked about topics that may be inappropriate for children under the age of 25, 26, 27, 40. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. This is episode number 102. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hello, everybody. And joining us once again is my lovely wife, Lauren Studley. I'm the cute one. Yay! Yay! We'll have to debate on that. It's like Animaniacs. Uh, (laughs) Wesley, compared to you and me, yeah, she's the cute one. Aw, Wesley's got a cute little round head. Aww. (laughs) It's cute. Ball joke. Like an orange. (laughs) Or a cantaloupe. Take bake. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, can't look okay. So how you been doing, Wesley? Oh boy. I got the the snippy snippy shakes. Uh yeah, yeah. Uh for all of you out there, yeah, I'm getting a vasectomy. Yay. Uh so when you listen to this, yeah, I'm probably getting snipped sometime about about that when you're recording, when you're downloading all this. Yeah. Anyways. Ah, how are you? Well, hopefully the uh, doctor's hand is, is steady. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, had a, uh, we got to go up to Deadwood Reservoir Fourth of July weekend for a little bit, and then came back and did the parade and used the float that I had built in about an hour and a half. Uh, Lauren talked me into getting a, a pipe cutter, so I was cutting PVC like a pro. Nice. And we found a dog, so that was awesome because I love dogs. Did you adopt said dog? No. Or just we, take it home? She was a stray at a local rural area, Horseshoe Bend, and everybody knew her. And they mm-hmm. put food out for her, but she didn't actually have a home, and she was super yeah. dehydrated. So yeah. we just took her with us back to Boise. So we turned her over to the Humane um, Society here, and uh, she'll be up for adoption probably next week. And I have a friend who's already got her name on it. Oh, well, So, awesome. Yeah. I'll be excited to see how her little personality developed. She was an Australian Shepherd. Ooh, cool. Yeah, really sweet dog. Yeah, I've been actually having a a conversation with uh, Devin Green, who is uh, Betty Bowers, you know, Mm -hmm. America's favorite Christian, over time about our cats, because apparently we have the same breed of cat, and I never knew what mine was, and she pointed it out that I have a Lynx Siamese. Oh, nice. My, My Wally, he's such an awesome boy kind of yeah. neat to be able to put a little label on there yeah yeah totally anyways oh all goodness. right uh one little <laughs> bit of, of news that's not worthy of the the main sections because it's well sports team usa won in the women's world cup fucking hey what was it five two yeah yeah five two <laughs> got the article up uh man this it, it was funny was i heard more about not hearing about this than i actually heard about it <laughs> Does that make sense? A lot I of people complaining so. about the media not covering it when, you know, at that point, the the U.S. national women's soccer team had made it through the semifinals, mm. and the mainstream media still wasn't picking it up. <laughs> they finally did after they won. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, uh, Team USA kept Japan from getting their second in a row, Uh and what, what was the other big one? Uh, they had like 25 million viewers, I think, in the U.S. alone. 
It was definitely the biggest year for the Women's World Cup. Of course, I had never heard of it until this year, so that's that's awesome. It's more popular than women's basketball, I think, at this point. That's yeah, fair yeah. to say. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Well, you know, the, the whole world popularity of soccer, you know, that can't be a bad thing on that. Basketball, not so popular around the world. Yeah, that's true. Oh, man, those girls, they played so well. It was embarrassing for the Japanese. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving along, uh, we got a message from Andrew uh, via mm. email. I have a suggestion for your show. I'd l- like you to talk about religious anthropocentrism and how it may adversely affect nature and the environment with emphasis on the denial of global warming, etc. Also, you can talk about how this destructive anthropocentrism has made its way to secular people as well. I think it's funny how religious people think they're worshiping a deity, but they're actually worshiping humans, especially themselves. I have uh, never heard of that word. All right. That's all up to you, man. All yes. You, uh, I've actually been uh, I've been planning for a while on uh, uh, moving on to some of the crazy end-time beliefs of Adventists, but as this question points out, there is a lot more to cover with creation because this all ties in with creation. So we'll spend a few more weeks here before we start, you know, jumping on to some of the the wackiness of the sanctuary and time of trouble and time of Jacob's trouble and all that fun stuff. There, there's lots of trouble. Spoilers. Double trouble. Spoilers with trouble, yeah. Anthropocentrism is a human-centered view, and it's something that permeates scripture and theology. It all starts right in the creation myth with Genesis 26 uh, to 28, Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, blah, blah, blah. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Especially the creepy ones. Yeah, but you can't eat the creepy ones. Okay. Uh, The belief that God made the earth and then made people to rule over it and subdue it is a belief that is very easy for people to exploit and use to justify their own greed. Yeah, businesses love that. Oh, totally. (laughs) Consumers love that. Now, (laughs) I don't know for certain they wouldn't do it without that belief, but it certainly helps make it easier And this belief by itself is dangerous enough, but it actually goes a lot deeper than that. Uh, When you add in the belief that the end is near, then caring for our surroundings isn't important. Uh, For example, the Adventist boarding school I went to for my last two years of high school was built in the 1950s to last about five years since they were certain that the time of trouble would start by then. Obviously. I was there 50, well... 45 years later, and they were having to rebuild everything. (laughs) There's also a common belief that God won't let us run out of natural resources or let the climate change to a point that's not conducive to our existence. Because, well, obviously he loves us and wants America to continue to dominate. Some even believe, as I once did, that if this is in fact happening, it's God doing it, or he's at least allowing it. And... It's all just part of the end of the days. After all, the Bible says God will destroy the earth with fire. Now, while it's dangerous for people to think that the earth is theirs to exploit, they would most likely want to meter that exploitation for the sake of their children and grandchildren. You know, maximum exploitation has to be over the maximum period of time, especially when you have resources that slowly, either slowly replenish themselves or resources that are finite in nature. But for those that think that Jesus will come and take them to heaven during their lifetime, the earth couldn't warm enough, sea levels couldn't rise enough, ice caps melt enough, storms get bad enough, or oil run out before it's all over. After all, as Re- Revelation 7, 2-3 says, Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising sun with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Since we haven't been sealed, they're not going to do anything to the earth. It'll all be okay. So is that like a cross-shaped stamp that just gets nailed to their forehead? Possibly. It's the the alternate to the Mark of the Beast. 999. Perhaps. 
777. But let's be honest here. A penis, honestly. If you ask Adventists, it's the Sabbath. <laughs> uh, but let's be honest here. Humanists also have an anthropocentric moral system. We just believe that future generations should have a world that is at least as good as ours. And that's all that really separates us with our environmental values from them with their exploitation at all costs. That's quite a big gulf there. It's a big gulf. And it's, I think it really is just as simple as we think there's a future and they don't. (laughs) Yay for the future. (laughs) Once I went from thinking that the world would end in my lifetime to thinking that we're here for the long haul, my environmental views quickly started to change. That was one of the most rapid changes that I had. Uh, It initially was kind of the conservative maximum exploitation for the maximum period of time, but didn't take long to move from there to let's just try to keep the earth nice. Campsite rule and whatnot. (laughs) Pack it in, pack it out. (laughs) Either that or you mean the rule where you hang your food from a tree so that a grizzly bear can't get it? Yes, yes, that's totally what I meant. Yes, it's important, people. Mm -hmm. Bears are serious. Now, on that note, what do you have for us for history? This day in history, July 9th, 1955, 2016 presidential candidate Lindsey Graham is born. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to pass by this fucker pretty quick, but I just want to say a quote that I just detest of his. Uh, Graham said, if I'm president of the United States and you're thinking about joining Al-Qaeda or ISIL, I'm not going to call a judge. I'm going to call a drone and we will kill you. Yeah. We're thinking about it. Yeah. that That's our presidential candidate. One of the, what, like 16, 17 on the, on <laughs> Just the Republican for the Republican side. party. Yeah. 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 Fucker. Wow. No trial. Nah. No due process and no actual crime committed. Just thinking about it. And this guy is the one that's arguing for a more inclusive Republican party. Sure. Yeah. Sounds pretty extreme to me. Uh, wow. Yeah. But well, look at those eyes. He does have lovely eyes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and how's this for a fucking ox moron? He was born in Central South Carolina. This day in history, 1976. For the first time, female cadets enrolled at West Point. Holy shit. Yeah, ain't that some shit? Uh, you know, they're a big old group of them. But uh, on May 28th, 1980, uh, 62 of those female cadets graduated and were commissioned as second lieutenants. So, holy shit. Ooh, nice. Yeah. So, another boys club down. Well, even though not most really. of the boys. Are, well, I mean, West Point is still pretty. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is it like? Pro- I'm sure it's some high 90s percentage. Yeah, there's of our men and probably there, white men at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a, another uh, similar story to this going on right now with the first women at the Army Ranger School. Hmm. And this was part of an experiment. Uh, most washed out in the first round. The rest got recycled, which meant they had to start all over again. And there's so they're, a, they're doing female only troops. No. Okay. No. And there's a few that are still in the running. Um, They had to recycle again. And where they're washing out, uh, aside from the first group that washed out in, uh, for not meeting the, the, not doing too well in the physical portion of it, uh, they're having difficulty with leading patrols, which is actually subjectively judged. And so there's concerns that it's male instructors who don't want to be the first one to pass a woman. (laughs) <laughs> uh, there's also just the possibility that because women aren't allowed in direct ground combat roles in the army, mm-hmm. they don't have any prior experience or training doing patrols. So somebody who already has that experience would have an advantage. Oh, definitely. Fucking A. Uh, but at least from the last article I saw, uh, they are, uh, considering it to be a success and may keep applications open to women. I hope they do. There's definitely there's somebody who's going to come along who's going to who's going to earn that. 
mm-hmm. and closing it down now just because a couple because the first wave didn't make it through that's that's that wouldn't be yeah. justified no but they need to front line some women so they can get some experience too yeah that's that's an argument that some make and an argument that some refuse to make yeah well and, and one of the the other thing issues is that even if they all passed they wouldn't actually get to join the rangers this wouldn't enable them to uh serve in in combat roles it would just mean they get the ranger tab this day in history oh my goodness i'm so happy about this one this day in history (laughs) 1981 donkey kong is released holy shit wow so yeah i know it's been that long (laughs) so uh Donkey Kongu, uh, Donkey Kong, old school cabinet uh, video game in the arcades. I mean, you had the main character, an uh, evil gorilla named Donkey Kong. You had the uh, the helpless uh, femme fatale, either na- known as uh, the lady or uh, Pauline, as I recall. Uh, and then the hero in his first, in his big debut, Mario. Hmm. Yeah. That's the first game that Mario was ever put in. Uh, four wow. years before any uh, uh, Mar- uh, Super Mario Brothers. Okay, why would j- the Japanese pick an Italian plumber as their hero? They didn't pick an Italian plumber. Um, they needed to distinguish his face better, so they put a black line to, so you could see where his nose was. And it ended up looking so much like a mustache, they went with it. <laughs> they just went, they're like, okay, let's make him Italian. Huh. But originally, he he was apparently he didn't have the mustache, so you couldn't tell. It was just a blob. <laughs> it was just a face blob. <laughs> I wouldn't be too surprised if that was the case. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is went on to spawn so many games. Uh, Donkey Kong Junior. He has a, a little boy uh, gorilla named Diddy Kong, and there's been racing and all these weird games I, I i really didn't get into the nintendo so i went with other systems but yeah shit anyways uh holy shit yeah one of the big boys one of the old school games got released it's nice Hooray. anyways yeah that kind of made me happy not in a way that Lindsey graham's eyes do but you know <laughs> there. so blue so blue it's true blue oh and uh this one's Happy in that kind of weird, icky way. Uh, this day in history, 1986. The Parliament of New Zealand passes the Homosexual Law Reform Act, legalizing homosexuality in New Zealand. Wow. Yeah. So um, <laughs> this one's kind of cool and kind of weird. It goes all the way back to 1840 when uh, New Zealand became part of the British Empire. And they adopted English law, which, uh, you know, male fuckery was uh, punishable by death. Uh, a few years later, in 1867, uh, buggery uh, took it, uh, wiped execution off, t- and just made it life in prison. You know, it, huh. you know better, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. 1893, the law was broadened so that sexual activity between men con- constituted a sexual assault. Even if it was if it was consensual, <laughs> uh, and you know penalties, you know again life in prison, hard labor, and flogging, uh, which some may or may not have enjoyed that part. Um, so, interestingly enough, sex between women has never actually been legally prohibited in New Zealand. Hmm. Yeah, uh, took uh, so. Anyways, uh, that well, law. Queen Victoria didn't think that was possible. <laughs> yeah, because scissoring never happens and stuff. Well, from what I've heard, it actually <laughs> doesn't, except for in porn. Yeah, you never know. That's what I've heard. There might be some te- there might be some teenagers out there who try it. So yeah, that law was on the books from a long ass time, like uh, uh, 1893 until basically 1961. Uh, so that was a long fucking time itself. Anyways, the bill, you know, uh, was introduced in 1985 and originally had two parts, one to decriminalize male homosexuality and the other uh, would provide anti-discrimination laws to protect gays and lesbians. Uh, Yeah, so 
The first part narrowly passed 49 to 44, and uh, they tried to pass the other half, and that failed, sadly. But a few years later in 1993, the second part was basically added also, and that became the New Zealand Human Rights Act. Hooray. Very nice. Yeah, so way to go, New Zealand, and being way more progressive than we were. And being friendly towards the gay kiwis. Can there be gay kiwis? Aww. Well, plants don't really care. They'll they'll send their pollen <laughs> wherever it goes. I thought kiwis were little tiny birds with long, long beaks. Well, they are that too, but... And they're also fruit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck, I forgot about them. Little fuzzy fruit. Yeah, they taste like strawberries. Mm. And I know a lot of birds will engage in same-sex activities, so I'd imagine that... Uh, the little flightless birds probably do as well. I just got the image of little kiwis cuddling in the rainforest, and it was just really cute. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so do you regret having a girl on the show yet? <laughs> no. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, you were talking about her. I thought you meant me. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Well, on that note, it's time for a quick break, and then Lauren will be uh, covering science. We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. Science! Anyway, this is the cool section of the show um, for, for all of you who are tired of talking about atheism and politics and religion and stuff. <laughs> all right, science and technology. So uh, I caught an article on uh, Fizz.org. Today, that's actually a day late, but I thought viewers out there, or listeners out there, rather, might find this interesting. July 6th was Earth's apoapsis. That is the point when the Earth is farthest away from the sun, uh, which is kind of funny because here we're at least celebrating, you know, the, the middle of summer. So being the furthest away from the sun can seem a little strange. Um at this point, it is 1.01668 astronomical units away from the sun. Uh, that equals out to about 94.5 million miles. For those of us who don't know our astronomical units, got to study up a little bit, guys. Uh, <laughs> our orbit's periapsis uh, was in January, and that is the point where the Earth is closest to the sun. So remember that January where it was like 20 degrees outside and Chicago's toilets were all frozen? Yeah, that's when we were closest to the sun. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I'm sure Australia was was feeling it, though. They were on fire, I, if I recall. Like, pretty much the entire continent country was on fire. Yeah, I during uh, their, their, their summer when we were cl- closer. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So it seems like we're on the wrong hemisphere for all this to make sense. In theory, it would make our summers cooler and our winters colder or warmer. Just a bit. But uh, I don't know how many millions of miles of difference it actually takes to feel it. And also we have an atmosphere that kind of keeps it all trapped in oceans that are constantly cycling around the heat. So probably not much of a real Global impact. Global warming! I shook my fist angrily in case you guys couldn't see that through your microphones and headphones. Okay, next one. Um, some of you have been following New Horizon. That is the spacecraft that is approaching Pluto. <laughs> Uh, that NASA sent out many, many, many years ago. Uh, It is approaching very quickly. They estimate that it will be actually doing a flyby next week. Uh, The problem is, though, is that they had a bit of a glitch this last week. Uh, The computer rebooted, Uh, (laughs) which is not good when you are, you know, right there, the point of the whole mission, and then your computer shuts down. Uh, Apparently what was going on was that they were doing some multitasking, which included some high-resolution imaging that normally is not going on. And then um, a couple of other tasks decided to, you know, on time, progress. And the computer sensed that it was starting to overload, so it shut down. Uh, It rebooted in safe mode a couple hours later. 
and NASA was able to reconnect with it, reconnect to it within a couple of hours. So, not a whole lot of damage. They did, however, lose about two days worth of observational data, which every hour that you miss sucks right now because this is when they're collecting the most important data for Pluto. This is the, the flyby. You know, that's the most important part. Um, the actual flyby, the point where the spacecraft will be closest, will be July 14th. So we should be getting some pretty amazing images right about that time. Right now, we just pretty much have some fuzzy blobs. Uh, awesome. Which are cool, but not as cool as high-resolution high photography will be. Very nice. There are also uh, very... They're also stressing the point that they have new protocols in place, and that will never, ever happen again, they say. <laughs> oh. As for some other more popular... Uh, uh, media attention. Happy Shark Week, everyone! Did you know that this has been going on for 28 years? Holy shit. This is the 28th year of Discovery wow. Channel's Shark Week. That blows my mind. I just turned 30. And I only started hearing about Shark Week, like, I don't know, maybe when I was in high school? Yeah. Yeah, it was probably college. I heard South Park mocking Shark Week. <laughs> yes. Because sharks are awesome. What makes them more awesome this year, though, is how many attacks there have been. North and South Carolina have had a record amount of shark attacks um, in, in their history. They've had 11 so far. That is twice as much as they usually get in a whole year. Whoa. Yes. So there's a couple of reasons for this. One. God is angry at them because of the Supreme Court's ruling. Yes. Yes. You have to, yeah. you have to eat the gays. Sharks have to eat the gays. Uh-huh. By attacking the most bigoted areas. The, the beaches? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The, okay. The Carolinas. <laughs> okay. So, um, there's a couple things that are going on here. One, the ocean water is warming. You know, the currents are pushing more warmer water. Sharks like warm water. They don't like cold water. So, that allows them to stray further and further uh, towards the coast. The next thing that's happening is that there was very little snowpack this year. Um, and those mountains right next, right along that coast, which mm -hmm. means that there wasn't as much fresh water flowing into the ocean, which means that the salinity has gone up, which allows the sharks to continue to move inwards more and more. Mm. So where it was basically almost impossible for a shark to hang out for very long, it's now almost on a regular basis that they can go ahead and feast on some little, little legs and floaties. Uh, Although 11 people have been attacked, I do not believe anybody has actually been killed. It's just something that happens every once in a while. Um, let's see here. Besides Shark Week, which is awesome, uh, big news on Sunday, SpaceX, known for their spacecraft that are flying supplies to the International Space Station at the moment, had their first major uh, explosion. Luckily, there was nobody on board. These are not manned uh, flights. But for the first time, the Falcon 9 exploded shortly after liftoff. And uh, they are considering it a pretty big blow to SpaceX's reputation. Mm. Honestly, though, it's the first one out of 19 missions. So, yeah, I'm giving them a little bit of credit. Not too bad. They managed to deliver successfully with no problems 19 times. Cool. And that's pretty good. Elon Musk has come out and said that this was a big blow to SpaceX, but they are going to go ahead and continue business as usual, which is great because, um, you know, when it comes to government-sponsored flights, there isn't a whole lot going on anymore. So SpaceX is doing everything to keep the, uh, the ISS supplied. Without having to just rely on Russia. With Besides their, Russia. With their kerosene-burning Soyuz rockets. And Putin. Those things have got to be pushing 40 years old, that, that design. Something. That's uh, ancient. If 40, 50. That'd be a design from the 60s, I think. Shit. Hey, if it still works, it still works. It burns kerosene. <laughs> <laughs> well, the U.S. isn't doing it. I know. That's, that's what's sad. We couldn't even bring back the stuff from the frickin' uh, Apollo era right now. Yeah. They did finally come out and say what was the cause of the explosion. There was a uh, a two-chamber liquid oxygen tank that um, the pressure grew too high and it exploded. 
which caused the explosion. Um, the explosion occurred only about two minutes after takeoff, so you can actually find videos of the explosion. Hmm. Um, it's pretty cool, even if it is kind of sad. You don't get to see a spaceship explode very often. Yeah, uh, if you well. just follow the link in the show notes, you'll get to see it. Yes, big old powdery, sad explosion. And that's it for science this week. All right, after another quick break, we will be back with politics and religion. As a listener of the show, I'm going to assume you love my sexy vocal stylings. If you love the rest of the show as much as my voice, consider giving us the resources we desperately need to purchase quality cocaine or Red Bull. We make it super easy to make a one-time donation or to support us on a per-episode, monthly, or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at AtheistNomads.com. Use the links on the right side of the page. A dollar an episode is all we ask. The the biggest news story since our last regular news episode was the the Supreme Court's uh, same sex marriage ruling, and Woo-hoo. we didn't have Wesley for us when Lauren and I and I talked about it uh, the day of the ruling. So Wesley, what do you have to say on it? Uh, there's been a whole bunch of awesome. Holy shit! Uh, yeah, we actually went to Pride a couple days later, uh, Seattle Pride Parade, which was fucking amaze balls. Usually it's like three hours or maybe four. This one was five and change. Just, oh man, uh, just a feeling of electricity every, everywhere you went. Uh, yeah, me and MJ with one of our friends who we went to the, to the pony and uh, lots of dancing and then people stage dancing and you know, balls up in my face. It was kind of awkward and funny and weird and fun and good times were had. Anyways, hmm. uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, there's been a lot of uh, court clerks that are uh, not really doing their jobs and getting yeah. smacked. So I'm yeah. loving this. Now, actually, before we get to the court clerks, uh, I do have a, a private business owner, uh, Pastor Jeff. A mix. He's a Baptist minister and also the owner of a Tennessee hardware store. Oh yeah, that guy. He put a sign in his store window the Monday after the Supreme Court's ruling that said no gays allowed. And he's legally allowed to. And we're legally allowed to not shop there. He got so much flack for it that he replaced the sign with one that reads... We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone who would violate our rights of freedom of speech and freedom of religion. He also said that gays are welcome as long as they don't uh, say anything about it. Uh, Yeah, so uh, don't ask, don't tell, don't flaunt it. Basically, yeah. Don't grind your ass up on him. With his sign, it was kind of, you know, it's definitely a nod on the, to the old, uh, no racists we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone mm-hmm. uh, which is just a way to say we reserve the right to refuse service to blacks <laughs> even though we can't say that and but his choice of words anyone who would violate our rights of freedom of speech and freedom of religion uh, those rights explicitly are rights to protect you from the government for, for an example on that, I had a situation once uh, when I was in Tacoma where a guy was, he'd, he'd always come wearing a suit, carrying his Bible, and he started preaching at a, oh, he, he had a, a note that he put in the hand of a pagan that was uh, in the row across from him. And these were, you know, he was a captive audience with a needle in his arm. And not all of his blood in his body. So this guy put that in his hand. And the guy looked at it and said, there is a God. His name is Jesus. And he loves you very much. Right. By the time I got called in on it, uh, they were about ready to be going to blows. (laughs) And it ended up being, it was Halloween as well. Uh And so it was the atheist manager, the Jewish doctor, and the pagan and the Christian. That sounds like it was beginning Come walking into joke. a bar. <laughs> yeah, or, or plasma center in that case. <laughs> and by the end of it, where, you know, like, for one, I was having to explain to this guy why you can't put proselytizing notes in somebody's hand when he's got a needle in his arm. 
And he didn't seem to get it. He thought I was censoring him, and he was going to stand up for his freedom of religion. And what I told him was, sir, that is a protection um, from the government. This is private property and a private business. And if you are doing anything that is disruptive to this business, I can ask you to leave. And I watched him closely until he left. (laughs) Of course, he was there stuck with a needle in his arm, too, right? Uh, oh, he waited until he w- he'd been uh, discontinued. So he was already bandaged and, and free to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't have freedom of speech on private property. And a private citizen can't violate anybody's right of freedom of speech. They can just express their own speech. Well, you see the meme on Facebook all the time. You, you have your right to freedom of speech, but you don't have the right to protect yourself from everybody that you piss off. Yeah. So, like, like this guy, he, what, if that actually has any meaning, what it says is he reserves the right to refuse service to any cops or lawyers that are trying to protect somebody from discrimination. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> lawyers, man. That's what, we have a bar here in Boise called the No Lawyers Bar. <laughs> that would almost work for there for there yeah yeah but i love how um a- allowing a gay person to shop at your store somehow uh, violates your personal freedom of religion that's not how freedom of religion works you're allowed to go worship anywhere at any time heck you can even worship right in front of the gay customer it yeah. doesn't matter it's it's a hardware store is he afraid that the gays are going to get married and then want to buy stuff to work on their house. How dare they get houses together? Oh, yeah. God damn it. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, public servants behaving badly. Uh, got got an a article if you want to read about all kinds of, of different public servants being bad. Um, there have been many of them. Uh, across the country, county clerks are refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Or in some cases, just to issue licenses at all. In most states, one of the primary duties of a county clerk is to issue marriage licenses. A public servant failing to fulfill their duties is a crime in many states. For example, Kentucky, (laughs) where it is a Class A misdemeanor. And they're also setting themselves up to be sued for civil rights violations. In Kentucky, there is actually a county clerk right now who has asked the governor to call a special session of the state legislature to make marriage licenses an online thing. Hmm. Take it away from the county clerks, just make it something run by the state and done online. Sure. I'd vote for it. One of the issues with that, and why I would actually be opposed to that... Then you'd need computer access? No, no. Which One of itch. the important parts of getting a marriage license is having your ID checked. Hmm. Well, they're all they all have barcodes on them now. You can just scan it. Not everybody has a scanner. Well, that no, there would be a computer station like an ATM for marriage licenses. <laughs> oh man, government, are you listening to this? Genius. This is genius. <laughs> but getting your ID checked to make sure that you're actually of legal age, uh, verifying that you are who you say you are, is kind of a, a thing the state has an interest in at that point, especially with all of the marriage laws that are still on the books, like saying that you can't marry cousins in most states or having age requirements and having uh, rules against marrying more than one person at the same time. And there would also, if it's online, nobody checking IDs, nobody verifying that both person act- or both people actually want to do it. When I don't know. There's all sorts of contractual stuff that goes on online now, though. I mean, they check your social security number. They ask you some personal, que- you know, questions. If you s- I- but that's all between you and the organization whose website you're on. A marriage isn't a contract between you and the state. Our marriage is a contract between you and me. Which brings up the question of why is the state involved at all? So that you can get the rights and privileges and benefits that come with marriage. Yeah, well, do we really need those? Do you really want those tax breaks? Yeah. The tax breaks, the visitation rights in hospitals, the mm. becoming next of kin, uh, inheritance. 
<laughs> you know, say 50 years from now, I die and you should be able to stay in the house. Yeah, I just think that there are better ways to deal with that stuff than... Just it's, leave them on the It's simpler. Lights. It's simpler it is this simpler, way. Yes. Just vacuum seal him and leave him on the couch and just say he's, you know, resting forever. And we can have a crazy awesome weekend. We- weekend at, at Bernie style? Yes. Yeah. I'll get him a, I'll get him a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, yeah. And sunglasses. Boom box that plays, you know, all that horrible music and make him dance. All right, so let's let's go ahead and move on to Hood County, Texas. <laughs> Whatever you say, dead Dustin. <laughs> Katie Lang is the county clerk there, and uh, she refused to issue a marriage license to Jim Cato and Joe Stapleton, who have been together for 27 years. On June 29, she told them that she wouldn't do it, but a staffer would. A little bit later, she told them that they couldn't get a license because they didn't have the new gender neutral forms, and so they'd need to wait three or four, or wait three or more weeks. They then went back July 2 with their own copy of the state's new form and were refused. Lang then ordered everyone to leave the office and called the sheriff's office to come. Cato and Stapleton had their lawyer come and deliver a warning of a lawsuit at that time while the sheriff's deputies were standing there watching. A staffer finally started completing the application and asked which one would be the husband. (laughs) When they insisted on the new form being used their payment was refused and they were told that they would still have to wait until they got the new certificates because you need more than just the license you also have to have the the certificate uh and then monday they filed a federal lawsuit two hours later they got their marriage licenses and the lawsuit is continuing yep too late yeah so that brings up the question is how many of these like small maybe maybe small areas i don't know how big hood county is google uh, but um yay google but uh is it possible that they just legitimately did not have the forms because it sounds like that was part of the problems one well, they the- had somebody who refused to do it and then two they didn't have the right forms and if you don't have the right forms you the run c- into that red tape deal you can print the it cu- yeah pdfs that's exactly what the couple did they just, when, you know, went on the website for Texas and printed for out the, the form, PDF. but not for the certificate. You could print that too. <laughs> when Idaho had the the uh, initial ruling come down uh, legalizing same sex marriage, the Secretary of State had a conference call, or, or it was the the uh, County Clerk Association had a, uh, a conference call for them all to get on the same page as to exactly how they would actually follow the law, including getting the new forms ready immediately and printing them off in advance. So it almost sounded like these guys just kind of blew it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They totally just blew it off and they didn't want to do it. And so they tried to dodge it. Uh, the population in hood County is 51,182. Aw, it's so, it's so cute. And also named after general, of the Confederate army. Yeah. <laughs> Aww, he's so cute too. So it's, you know, it's not a, a populous area but it's in the dallas fort worth metropolitan area oh hmm. yeah they you know, could get some freaking forms I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that they don't have a state printer that you know they you know uh print off bunches of reams of of certificates and and forms and send them to the the smaller you know states or smaller areas of the state so I'm gonna bet that they actually just print them themselves. And, yeah. And yeah. why did she call the cops? Uh, because, because people they were leave. there demanding their rights. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to violate hers. Yeah. It, uh, one of the things she had a staffer. Hers. Yeah. And all right. Worst case scenario: if you don't have the right forms, line it out, date and initial, because the only change was going from husband, wife to applicant one. Applicant two. Yep. That is a simple, easy air correction. Yeah. That's not hard. No, nope, gotta call the cops. And then somebody got shot. Nah. Well, no, nah. nobody got nope. shot. It wasn't luckily, Garden City. Sorry. Luckily, the guys were white. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, the, the lawsuit, they, they are, are continuing it because even though they did get their license, they want to make sure that any other gay or lesbian couple that goes into that county clerk's office gets their license. And they also had to get a lawyer to get their license. 
to get their civil rights. And if for nothing else, they will be suing for their lawyer's fees, which are going to be significant right to pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially <laughs> since the lawyers are going to be working to get the ruling to get paid. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. They're lawyers after all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and one county clerk in South Dakota was overheard saying, well, apparently I'm just going to marry my dog because we can just marry whoever we want anymore. Her supervisor yeah. told KSFY that it was a misunderstanding, not about the Supreme Court ruling. It was just about how much she loves her dog. Yeah. Two things. Fucking consent. Dog can't give it. Two, if the dog could give it, dog wouldn't want to marry you. Well, for one, it... It was obviously sarcastic. If it was about the mm. Supreme Court ruling, that would be less scary than if it being about how much she loves her dog. Yeah, they didn't really fix that. that they just made it creepy. Yeah. They, went, <laughs> they took it from hateful to creepy. Mm-hmm. And if this, this woman is working, actually involved in the issuing of, of marriage licenses, uh, she definitely needs to get some remedial training. Because it's clear that she doesn't understand what the rules are. Because it's not just that you can marry anyone you want. There are restrictions. There aren't many, but there are restrictions. Like everyone has to be human, adult, consenting, and not a close relative. In some states. I well, think there, there <laughs> is a level of close relative where it is not allowed in any state. <laughs> like siblings. Yeah, no, she made a... <clears throat> A bigoted little remark under her breath. It was overheard, and instead of just owning up to it... Oh, actually, it wasn't under her breath. She was no. conversing with a, a customer at the window. Yeah, all okay. all kinds wow. of unprofessional. So right she there. should just get fired, because she didn't do her job yeah. very well. Yeah. Yeah, when you're a civil servant... Wesley, you're a civil servant. I am. It is your job to comment on government policy while you're at work? Definitely not. Well, this uh, is, it's just it's just a, a no no brainer for anybody in any kind of customer service role. Yeah, you don't diss the people that you're serving. Yeah, well, and especially when you're a civil servant, your job is to carry out the laws, not critique the laws. Yep. I mean, even if a rule rule is dumb, you still got to follow it. And the FedGov has quite a few dumb rules. Anyways, um, oh yeah. <laughs> And you can mm. bitch about all of them here. Sure. This would be appropriate. Yeah. It's like Not people who, who complain about their job on Facebook when they're Facebook friends with their bosses. Yeah. It's yeah. great. As Dumb. long as the boss doesn't hear you. Yep. <laughs> and in uh, Decatur County, Tennessee. Oh, this is my favorite. <laughs> the uh, county clerk's office is currently refusing to issue marriage licenses to gay and lesbian couples. I am going to stop using any kind of terminology like same-sex couples or uh, marriage equality, gay marriage, same-sex marriage, anything like that. It's just marriage now. Yeah. Uh, but since they, they recognized that this means that they are refusing to perform a key job duty, the entire office's staff has submitted their resignations effective July 14. To be fair, entire staff means three people. Yes. And to be <laughs> so. fair... They did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. They, out of this entire list, they're the only ones who actually took the right step. If you can't, for some reason, perform your job, you step down. Mm-hmm. Now, it sucks because jobs aren't exactly easy to come by, especially cushy, you know, cushy government jobs. But, yeah, I give them credit for at least doing the right thing. They even gave them a couple weeks notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was very They'll very replace nice them. them with some people who are younger and... Who Not will actually as, do their job. Yeah, yeah, people who actually do the job. Yeah. And uh, that'll be the end of that little little page in history. Uh, you know, they are government workers, and I'm I'm kind of scared that... Well, you know, government workers all, all know all the rest of the government workers in the area. And I'm kind of scared that they might still get unemployment uh, wrongly in this case. But I'm still kind of concerned about that. And we, so if somebody's out there, you know... Check up on this shit and fucking whistleblow that. Well, and if they don't, they're going to get support from crazy religious bigots anyway. Yeah, they just need to start a uh, GoFundMe page. They'll be fine. Maybe, maybe not. You know, who, who was that 
weird racist bald guy down in Arizona. He got a GoFundMe and he was trying to raise like 10, like over a million dollars and he got 300. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the guy who was trying to buy the jet? No. No, uh, no, that was no. the, that the was, evangelical uh, do- who that wanted was to buy a jet. That guy, guy was dollar. No. Yeah. Yeah. It, but yeah. yeah, if you if you can't do your job, if say you're a work in a blood bank and you decide you can't handle blood, you shouldn't work in a blood bank. Yeah, that job's just not a good fit for you. There's, there's also um, accommodations that are built into law for people who have religious objections to their jobs. They can usually get them placed in another job pretty quickly, and that's I think these people would qualify for that. Um, it's over a thing that I personally think is stupid, in, but it's, mm, it's typically, there. Typically, county clerks are elected, yeah, and so an elected official can't be transferred to another job. That's not just an employee. True. The two employees, uh, if there's only three in the clerk's office, that's a small county. There's not going to be a lot of jobs. True. Well. And you only have to accommodate if there's another position available. You can put somebody in. It, it, uh, under some circumstances, and uh, you don't have to keep someone in a job that they refuse to perform. Oh, all right. And uh, finally, for this uh, section on the, the backlash, Pastor Rit Veradil of the Elizabeth Baptist Church in North Carolina has installed a flagpole at his church so that he can raise the Christian flag above the American flag. And he is encouraging everyone else to do the same to signify that they put their beliefs above the government, namely to protest the Supreme Court ruling. (coughs) Asshole. (coughs) Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, what he's missing here is that if you're going to display the flag as a sign of patriotism, do it the goddamn right way and follow the flag code, which he thinks is incorrect. And if you want to protest the government, like he is wanting to do with the use of a flag, then burn it. I mean, he could have a flag up there that below the U.S. flag. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's not fine. really the point. He's just saying that God uh-huh. is God comes God first. is a higher power than the government, but they have this whole flag code God comes are first. obsessed with, so I guess that's Yeah. I'm still gonna say this. Ah, God comes first, you come second or not at all. But up is that a sloppy second reference? No, not quite. It's just like a, he doesn't really care if you do or not. <laughs> and in other news, uh, we've got an update from California. On June 30, Governor Jerry Brown signed into law the new vaccine bill. Yay! C- California now joins Mississippi and West Virginia as the only states with medical exemptions only. How weird is that? The fucking Mississippi. You know? God. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. well, Mississippi had the worst vaccination rates, uh, what, 10 years ago? Oh, really? Something like that. And then they totally turned around because they passed laws that didn't let people get away with it without it. Yeah. It's uh, amazing how quickly you can turn something like that around. And now my fear... <laughs> it's amazing how much people will, will follow the law once you make it into a law. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and especially if it's required to put your kid in public school or in California's case, any school. Uh, now, as somebody who lives in a state near California, my concern is that now the mass migration of Californians is going to be shifting to those who don't want to vaccinate their children. Really? Ain't nobody want to go to Idaho. Yeah, they do if that doesn't mean if that means that the federal government will stay out of their lives. Conservative Californians move to Idaho and Montana. Liberal Californians <laughs> move to Oregon and Washington. Yeah, we're actually kind of a haven for conservative Californians. <laughs> and they like to pick pockets. And like Kootenai County up in uh, northern Idaho, they turned it from liberal Democrat to conservative Republican. And I really hope they don't create a whole bunch of pockets up here of unvaccinated little breeding grounds for disease. <laughs> well, of course, I think of children like that anyway. But yeah, yeah. yeah. At least vaccinate them so they aren't <laughs> as much of that. Uh, so, you know, honestly here, I think Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana needed to either pass the same law 
or need to figure out some way to ban Californians from moving in if they are, their children aren't vaccinated. Oh, in Utah. And uh, the Catholic Church's Oslo DOC in Norway has been fined $5.1 million for fraudulently registering about 56,500 of the 65,500 total new members they registered between 2010 and 2014. Yes, they are saying that all but 10,000 of those were fraudulent. (laughs) They are accused of searching phone books for Polish and Spanish names, tracking down their resident registration numbers, and adding them to the member rolls without their consent. And this is an issue because the Norwegian government subsidized churches and during this time period gave the Catholic Church $6 million. So now they want $5 million of that back. And when asked about it, the DOC's acting administrative leader said, we have a completely different understanding of the law than the government. Right. I wonder if this is because the Catholic Church typically doesn't maintain traditional member roles and instead uses estimates to determine membership numbers. The church has gone down the phone book, basically, and adding people that sounded that had uh, uh Spanish or or Polish sounding names. Well, in a heavily Catholic country like Spain, they would just count the entire population as members. Sure. And they get lots and lots of money for it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But Norway, they're not going to have a whole lot of Catholics. Nah. No, they really don't. So, yeah, that those numbers aren't right. And uh, I'm glad they got busted for that, because that's Norwegian taxpayer money that could be going towards really good things. Yeah, like now, good medical. What the hell is Norway doing still subsidizing churches? I don't know. That's <sighs> for, for, for the Scandinavian countries, it seems a little backwards. They're usually pretty progressive when it comes to these things. Norway is one of the most atheistic countries in the world, and they directly subsidize churches. It's well, maybe maybe this will make some people think about it and maybe bring it up in the next election. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and for some more good news, on June 30, the Oklahoma Supreme Court ruled 7-2 to two that the Ten Commandments monument on the state capitol grounds must be removed because it violates the state constitution which states that, and I quote, no public money or property shall ever be appropriated, applied, donated, or used directly or indirectly for the use, benefit, or support of any sect, church, denomination, or system of religion. (laughs) And then uh, Governor Mary Fallon had to stick her nose in it and say that she's not moving it. Yeah, yeah. The state attorney general has requested a reconsideration of the ruling the legislature is working on a constitutional amendment, and unfortunately, the Satanic Temple had already said they're no longer interested in putting their Baphomet statue on the Capitol grounds. Ooh, bring it back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, all they would have to do is get an amendment that would re- remove the system of religion out of their constitutional rule, mm-hmm. and they would be fine. But, ooh, plus I really want a Satanic statue. Fuck Yeah. <laughs> I bet they could sell little mini statues of that really well. They need to just put it in Mary Fallon's office. She has to sit on it every time she has to work at her desk. Yeah, that would be awesome. Make it the the governor's throne sitting in the lap of Baphomet. Okay, (laughs) I'm not a Satanist, but that sounds pretty badass. Lucian, if you're listening, could you send us a, a, a Baphomet chair? Fuck it, I just want a little baby Baphomet that I can put next to my uh, Buddy Christ statue. Oh, yeah, maybe they have 3D print models that you can get. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. And for our final news story, man, we are getting uh, low on time, and it is <laughs> we've got so much feedback. Um, abstinence advocate Bristol Palin is still not married and is pregnant again. And still willing to flap her lips and uh, t- uh, give all those people that are paying her uh, all that advice about how abstinence only really works. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, it works for other people, just not her. Right. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hey, I, you know, it's her income. <laughs> She'd be stupid to go against it. Yeah. But, I'm not, yeah, I'm not trying to shame a woman for, I'm not trying to shame a woman for having 
another kid out of wedlock, but god damn. You can shame someone for hypocrisy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But more important is that if even the people most excuse me, most vocally advocating for it can't follow their own teaching, can we finally admit that it doesn't work? Okay, and now it's time for feedback. <laughs> Uh, first off, we've got a number regarding episode 100, well, 100 episodes, uh, mm-hmm. from Jason Ford. That's at JCC Ford on Twitter, at Atheist Nomads. Damn it! I forgot to call in and say Grata. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Chronify Me, at Chronify Me on Twitter. Congrats to at DW Nomad and at Wesley D. Nomad over at, at Atheist Nomads for reaching 100 episodes. Thanks, Paul. Steve Feel Hayes. Added in with, seriously, that's awesome. Congrats, guys. Yay. And from Todd Mills, at In God We Trusted. That's the <laughs> letter N. The rest is as it sounds. Uh, at Atheist Nomads, congrats on your 100th episode. Been with you since secular FM days. Fucking okay. Yeah. Uh, we got a, a tweet about gun control um, from Todd Mills. Again, at In God We Trusted. At Atheist Nomads, do you think gun owner insurance, just like auto insurance, would control guns? Nope. No. If you've seen how people drive, yeah. auto insurance doesn't control cars. Uh, I would say that there are so many guns in the U.S. anyways, both uh, the registered ones, you know, that you might be able to do a thing with that, but holy shit, do you know how many guns have been sold or just lost, quote unquote lost? It, it just wouldn't be a, a a thing. And the insurance would basically just be a personal liability policy where if you kill someone, the insurance company will cover your legal fees and, and pay hopefully damages. The, the, the burial of the other person. Yes. Okay, okay I'm going to do the next one because she's female. And okay. so am I. I'm assuming, actually. It could, it could... Uh, she's female. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. see the picture of her? No, that's all right. <laughs> Regarding marriage equality from Jasmine Lay at Pixie Chick... Chixie, Pixie Chixie 36 listen to Marriage Equality on Stitcher by Atheist <laughs> Nomads. Yay! Yeah, and the next one's also a woman. Yeah. Jen Chadborn. Ego Dram at JL Chadborn. Yep. yep. Who's I, been on the show. Awesome. Atheist Nomads. Hey, hey, hey. Santorum. And the yeah. picture that she included was awesome. Papa Bear Bill O'Reilly right behind a squinting, wincing Pat. Pat. Robertson, Robinson, Robertson, Robertson. Yeah, it's a little icky. You got to use your uh, thoughts with the um, yeah. Facebook pride. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. A little bit of Bill on Pat action, and then uh, regarding phenylalanine from Robert Ray via email. Phenylalanine is actually fun to say. Yes, it is. I'm <laughs> a fan uh, of phenylalanine. Hey guys, I wanted to make a few comments on the latest episode, specifically the section about aspartame and phenylalanine (PHE). I happen to be very familiar with this particular amino acid as Amy has phenylketonuria, PKU. I'm not sure how much you know about it, so I'm going to break it down a bit. PKU is a genetic metabolic disorder that prevents those affected from processing phenylalanine into tyrosine. Both are essential amino acids, and under normal conditions, they pose no risk to normal people. However, when phenylphenylene builds up in the system... As in a PKU patient, it collects in the brain and causes severe neurological damage. In children, this can be incredibly dangerous and was a cause of many infant deaths prior to the advent of mandatory testing in the 1960s. Even in those that survived, it led to severe mental problems. Amy has had to adhere to a very strict diet, which cuts out anything with PHE in it. This means all meat, nuts, beans, soy, certain mushrooms, and most dark forms of squash. As you can see, this leaves very little she can eat and that it and that it is to be measured and weighed to calculate the amount of PHE. Additionally, she has to drink a very unappetizing drink that contains all the nutrients she is missing. Sadly, this drink is not covered by any insurance and is rather expensive. Without this diet, she suffers from severe mood swings, loss of hair, depression, lowered cognitive abilities, and could suffer early dementia. Fuck. Yeah, just thought you guys might like a little bit more on one of your stories. That wow. Is, thanks for pointing that out. That is um, that is why that stuff is has to be listed on those bottles. If anybody looks at a diet soda bottle, they'll notice that it says uh, phenyl, phenylalanine, phenylalanine. 
You've actually been pronouncing it wrong. I don't care. I like to say okay. phenylalanine. It's fun. Okay, go for it. If the wrong way is more fun, I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. Phenylalanine. And then... It's uh, like M. Night, Sh- M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan ding dong. And generally when we're talking about anything like, you know, aspartame, it's... We're referring to the average person. Uh, there are always disorders. It's like... It's safe to say, generally, that Walnuts are safe, unless you're Wesley or me. Yep. Or MSG is safe for most people, yeah. except for the people that have a sensitivity to it. Now, allergies are serious things. Uh, metabolic disorders are very serious things. And yeah, thank you very much for, for sharing. And then we got some feedback about Lauren. I am so awesome. First off was from Paul from Coronify Me via Facebook. After a couple of episodes, I'm convinced. Keep Lauren on the show. She adds quality, has a sense of humor, and has great timing. Just a little listener feedback. Wink emoticon. Wink back at you, Paul. Happy (laughs) wink. (laughs) Not sleazy wink. (laughs) I'm not that kind of lady. And from Stephen A. via email. Gentlemen and lady, I have been listening to your show for about a year now, and the Atheist Nomads podcast is now my top three faves. I look forward to each new episode. Keep up the great work. I heard on your show that one of y'all got married recently. That was that was him, me, Dustin, and <laughs> Lauren. Yay! Uh, congratulations. Yeah. Sadly, my memory is quite poor, and I cannot remember which one of you actually tied the knot, nor can I remember the name of your lovely wife, who, in my opinion, should appear on the show more often. It is very refreshing to hear the point of view of women in the secular community. And is I'm going to cut in here for a little bit. Is this one of your parents? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I do want to cut in that uh, we, we do have women as guests periodically um it's not as often as we probably should but i don't know you had do. a good streak of, of of really good women guests for a while yeah. um yeah. and i i do not claim at all to represent the average woman ever <laughs> uh back to the email but i do love puppies that's, uh, the, that's pretty womanly back to the email the the real reason for my email is that i'll be getting married in february 2016 my Yay. so and i are looking to have a completely secular wedding and we're looking for some good readings and ideas for the ceremony what readings did you all use in your ceremony or do you have any good suggestions for humanist quotes poems and appropriate blurbs we are still in the planning phase and we greatly appreciate your input i come from a very large and highly religious family down in texas most of whom are missouri synod lutherans I even have an mm-hmm. uncle who is a pastor and another cousin in seminary. The uncle of mine offered to officiate the ceremony, but we declined. My SO and I thought it would be better to have her brother acquire the proper credentials and preside over our union. The icing nice. on the cakes for me is that he is a proud, successful gay man, and it's going to be awesome. Thank you again for all you do, and I look forward to hearing from you. Stephen A. Uh, Stephen, uh, our wedding we kept very short. It the the actual ceremony was all of what two three minutes. It was it was very secular. Very secular. It was very, basically, we went through all the readings and suggestions, and I pretty much nixed them all. I'm like, nope, nah, and nah. Let's just no, nope, let's just go eat. I nixed most of the rest. Uh, it, it, the the list we had was from a, the humanist celebrant who officiated for us, and he had a bunch of kind of stock stuff and. Yeah, a lot of them seem to be kind of bullshit. So we really shrunk it down. Um, I'll I'll send on to you the notes from our wedding, and I can send you my stock script that I've used and developed over the, what, five, six weddings I've officiated. You could always start with the um, Princess Bride marriage. That That's pretty <laughs> secular. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Don't, uh, hey, don't forget our friend of the show, Robert Ray. Uh, he's been on the show before and I'm sure he's Facebook friends with both of us. Uh, Mm -hmm. he's been a celebrant for a very long time. Yeah. There's, even if it just comes down to your, your own personal definition of what love is or commitment, there's going to, you're going to find a lot of stuff. If you start Googling, that's the problem though. Maybe you should just stick with what other people tell you because then you don't have to worry about looking it all up. (laughs) Anyway, if any of you uh, want to get in touch with us, you can always email us at contact at atheistnomads.com or call us at 541-203-0666 or hit us up on Twitter or Facebook as, well, other people did. And we got two new supporters. Yay! Woo-hoo! As a platinum sponsor, we got BT Motley. Holy fuck. 
DT is a beauty. <laughs> and at the gold level, we got Duncan Margarets. That is very nice, guys. Or girls or whoever. Awesome. That puts us down at about $52 per episode. And, Holy uh, fuck. We will be discussing uh, what new perk we want to set up for the $100 mark. Since we need to mm. revisit those. I, I was looking on the Patreon site and the uh, only big incentive for getting up to higher numbers, we already did. You guys should make a mascot and then give out little plush animals of the mascot of Rocco. <laughs> oh my god, a little Chihuahua Taco would be a great mascot. <laughs> maybe anyway, it's t- Maybe it's time for t-shirts, man. E- yeah, it is. It is. T-shirts, bumper stickers, decals, uh, Darwin fish with your names inside them. I don't know. Anyway, you can always uh, support us on Patreon or PayPal. Uh, Just go to AtheistNomads.com and you'll find it on the sidebar. And we will be back at you next week with an interview. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find us online at www.atheistnomads.com Contact us at contact at atheistnomads.com or leave us a voicemail message at 541-203-0666. You can also like us on Facebook or leave us a review on iTunes, Zoom, or wherever else you find the podcast. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads. I'm being loud and unruly. He had to take the dogs out. They were being loud. That's all good. And now he's arguing with them like they're people. As one does. Yes. As one should do.